Hello, this is Ed from practicalnetworking.net. Welcome to another video in the video series on access control lists. This is video two. We'll be looking at the syntax for configuring a numbered access list. In the first video, we answer the question, what are access lists? We define them as a tool you use to identify traffic. We talk through how when you apply an access list to an interface, you can call it a packet filter, and then a packet filter can only be applied once per interface, per direction, and per IP protocol. We then define the two types of access lists that exist, them being the standard access list and the extended access list. In this video, we're going to be looking at the syntax to configure access lists on Cisco routers. Now there's two sets of syntaxes you can use to configure access lists on a Cisco router. Those two ways are numbered access list and named access list. You can use either set of syntax to configure either access list. In this video, we're going to pick apart the syntax for numbered access list. In a video that follows, we'll do the same for named access list. Here is the syntax for configuring numbered access list on Cisco routers. Notice I'm giving you two sets of syntax, one for standard access list and one for extended access list. These commands configure a single line in a standard or extended access list. Now we're going to step through each part of these commands together. To configure any numbered access list, you're always going to start with the command access list. That's simply the first word to indicate to the router you're configuring an access list. Following that, you're going to provide an ID number. This ID number is what links multiple access list entries together. Each access list entry is an ID number and then a match statement, and then another ID number and a match statement, and then an ID number and a match statement, another ID number and a match statement. What links all of these entries together is that ID number. That's the purpose of this ID number over here. It allows you to link multiple entries into the same access list. In fact, sometimes each individual entry is referred to as an ACE. ACE stands for Access Control Entry, and a series of ACEs creates an access control list. That's somewhat archaic terminology, but you might see it in random documents online. Either way, that's what an ID number does. Now the ID number is also how you will refer to the access list later on in the configuration when you apply the access list to a particular purpose. In a numbered access list, this ID number must be a number, but the number you choose is very significant. If you choose the numbers 1 through 99, you're configuring a standard access list. And if you choose the numbers 100 through 199, you're configuring an extended access list. That's how you determine whether you're configuring a standard or extended access list. It's based upon the ID number that you use. This means that you can configure about 100 of each type of access list on every Cisco router. Typically, you won't need more than that. But just in case you do, there's an additional set of ID numbers you can use to configure either a standard or extended ACL. So if you use the ID numbers 1 through 99 or 1300 through 1999, you're configuring a standard access list. And if you use the ID numbers 100 through 199 or 2000 through 2699, you're configuring a numbered extended access list. So that's the purpose of the ID number, which now brings us to the action field. This field can be one of three items. It can either be a permit, which says you're accepting traffic for a particular purpose, or you can list deny, which means you're rejecting traffic for a particular purpose, or the last option is you can simply list a remark. When you use the action of remark, it turns the rest of the syntax into a free text field, and you can type whatever you want. You can say something like, I created this access list on such and such date, or in response to such and such ticket number. It's just a simple comment. These two, however, are actually processed against traffic. This permit and deny statement are relative to how the access list is applied. For example, if you apply an access list to an interface, then the permit is saying, I will allow this traffic to go through the interface. And then deny is saying, I will not allow this traffic to go through the interface. But if you apply this access list to network address translation, then the permit is saying, I will translate packets which match this ACL. And the deny is saying, I will not translate packets which match this ACL. But that packet might still be allowed through the interface. So keep in mind, this permit and deny are relative to how you've applied the ACL. Next, we have the protocol. Now notice there is no protocol in a standard access list. The standard access list can only filter on the IP protocol. Whereas in an extended access list, I can filter on different protocols. So this field is how you specify which protocol you're trying to match. There are a few different options here. 
one of which is simply IP. If you list IP in the protocol section, you're indicating to the router that you're matching all IP traffic. You can also match on the TCP or UDP protocols. If you specify one of these, you'll be able to specify ports later on when you get to the source and destination. You can also list the protocol ICMP to match pings and traceroute, and there's a slew of other protocols you can use, like GRE or these IPsec protocols and so on. Keep in mind, this field does not mean ports. Ports will be specified later on if you specify TCP and UDP as the protocol. Which finally brings us to the last three fields. Now the source in a standard access list and the source or destination in an extended access list are specified using the same syntax, so we can talk about all of them at the same time. These fields follow this syntax. You must specify some sort of IP addresses and you may specify ports. Now to specify IP addresses, you would use this syntax. To specify a single subnet, you would specify the network ID and then the wildcard mask. To specify a single IP address, you would use the keyword host and then list the IP address. And then finally, to specify all IP addresses, you would simply use the keyword any. Here are the three options you have for this field, which is a part of these fields in the syntax for the ACLs. Now in this video series, we're not going to be unpacking wildcard masks. We did create a separate video discussing wildcard mask at length. If you're unfamiliar with the concept of wildcard mask, definitely check out that video. There'll be a link in the description. That said, let's move on to the ports section. Now remember, ports can only be specified in an extended access list. You cannot specify ports in a standard access list. Either way, if you choose to specify ports, you have a few different options. To specify a single port, you can use the keyword EQ and then list that port number. The EQ here stands for equals. You're saying the port must equal such and such. To specify a range of ports, you would use the range keyword. And then you would list the starting port number and the ending port number. Keep in mind, this is an inclusive range, which means if you list a starting port number of 20 and an ending port number of 25, you're specifying to match six different ports. Now, most of the time when you're specifying ports, you'll be using that guy right there. Occasionally, you'll be using that guy right there. But there are three other options which are pretty rare to use, but are important to know about to give you a full understanding of the configuration of access list. Here are those options. You can specify GT to say the port must be greater than a certain port number. You can specify that the port must be less than a certain port number or even not equal to a certain port number. So all those are options you have to specify this section of the source or destination of an extended access list. Now note that we're using brackets in the syntax over here. That means that the port section is optional. So if you omit the port, if you don't put anything in here, you're matching on all ports. Okay, so now that we've talked through every single field in the syntax for numbered access list, it's time to actually configure some together so you can see them in action. In the next video, we'll be configuring access list entries to match some of the packets in this topology. But that's it for this video. The key takeaway is understanding each of the fields in the syntax for numbered access lists. I hope you enjoyed this video. I want to thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next video where we will configure access list entries together.